You've heard a lot of information and data on current acuity and the needs of our patients and families. So I'd like to present just a quick couple of vignettes to reflect the, the, that reflect the people for whom it is our privilege to care. And that is the way we see them. That person in the bed attached to a ventilator, multiple beeping machines, and the tangles of tubing is someone's mother or brother or child or beloved spouse. As I enter my tertiary care medical ICU in one of the nation's top teaching hospitals, my patient is a gentleman with malignancy, weakened kidneys, multiple skin lesions, respiratory compromise, and heart ischemia. He is on advanced oxygen and multiple intravenous medications to support his blood pressure. He requires almost hourly blood collections and then correction of what the blood samples reveal. He needs to have multiple invasive catheters placed in large veins and an artery to support these activities, all of which require hours of time to place and by policy a critical care nurse at the bedside throughout the procedure. The medications are increased or decreased minute by minute as is the oxygen. Later that night, continuous dialysis initiated and managed by the critical care nurse has begun. Family members are at the bedside, x-rays are taken, CAT scans were arranged, rounds are held, lab results are reported, teeth are brushed, intravenous fluids are updated, medications are administered. How would a nurse care for another patient? And this patient is not on a ventilator. The next patient is a young man whose lungs have failed and even mechanical ventilation can no longer provide his organs with the amount of oxygen required for life. His blood is being oxygenated by extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. He has a tracheostomy, a feeding tube, a catheter in his bladder, a catheter in the large vessels in his neck, and one in an artery. In addition to the large machine with pulsating tubes of blood snaking around it, there's a ventilator in the room and seven IV pumps. To turn this patient, this young man requires a minimum of two registered nurses and two respiratory therapists to turn the patient. As you recall, CMS is no longer reimbursing for hospital-acquired pneumonias, of which frequent position change and lung exercise is a basic intervention. In the scenarios presented, you see there is no lunch break nor restroom opportunity. I know I represent many of my colleagues who gulp a cup of cold coffee once or twice a shift rather than place the patient at risk by leaving the bedside. Also not mentioned are the myriad other tasks performed by the critical care nurses. She, is he, she or he cares for this most vulnerable of patients, calling pharmacy for medications, calling equipment for pumps, compression booths, etc., taking lab results, discussing each aspect of care with the care team, explaining staffing needs to administrators, answering phones that never seem to stop ringing, being on the turn team of the other patients on the unit. If I need two or three nurses, then I turn their patients as well. Some patients need to be turned hourly with three, four, even five people for safety. And this, honored commissioners, is the best case scenario. I also moonlight in a community hospital where ICU patients are never singled. Granted, the acuity is somewhat less, but shock is shock. A ventilated patient on blood pressure medicine is the same everywhere. A gastric hemorrhage is a gastric hemorrhage, life-threatening. One quick last illustration. This is in the community. Five patients, a 17-year-old with compartment syndrome, threatening to life or limb, a middle-aged heart patient awaiting a bed in Boston, a long-term ventilated patient with a resistant organism pneumonia on contact precautions, a fresh post-operative patient, and another post- and pre-op patient who was in a pre-cardiac arrest situation. There were three nurses for these five patients. A new nurse, a float from the general floor, and a per diem, yours truly. While we had the emergency card at the bedside with one nurse at the bedside and I was helping her as well as caring for two of the other patients and supporting that float nurse from the floor, the, the nurse administrator arrived in the ICU to tell me that she had an admission for me and in which bed would I want to put it. <laughs> 